yesterday um I, I did a facebook live broadcast and when i was praying i heard when faith faileth and I, and I was amazed i asked does that thing exist in the bible can faith fail i thought we were born by faith and we live by faith then i came across this scripture in luke 22 from verse 30. Luke 22 from verse 30. But I'll not call my message when faith faileth. I'll call it Okay. Okay, let's go to 28. Let's begin from somewhere we can open up. But you are those who have continued with me in my No. Okay, yes, 20, yes. You are those who have continued with me in my trials. Uh-huh. And I bestow upon your kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging 12 tribes of Israel. Now remember the story of Luke is happening when Jesus is talking to the 12 disciples. And his, his, this is the speech of a man that is about to be crucified. And so he's talking to them and he's, he's trying to remind them. Let's look at 29. He's trying to remind them. The reason why I came is because there is a kingdom that I want to bestow. There is a system of governance that I want to release upon you. And this kingdom has to be released upon you because I didn't just come to release salvation. But I came so that men can be members and ambassadors of this kingdom. So salvation becomes the way we become citizens of this kingdom. Uh, and so in, 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 in 29, let's go to 30. In 30, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is the intention of Christ, that at the end of the day we will sit on thrones and judge. Are we together? Uh, and, but in 31, something begins to un unfold. 31, 22, 31. The Bible says, and the Lord said, Simeon, Simeon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, they are sitting on the table, but Simeon does not know the reality. And Jesus, who is all-knowing, begins to tell him what the devil has sought to do. Now, let's look at that too. But, are you seeing the name but? This was my encouragement. I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. The Lord began to tell me, there are things that can come in life and they will shake our faith. But there is an intercessor that intercedes for us. Okay. And when you have returned to me, so he knew, when your faith fails, we are not together. <laughs> so Jesus is announcing prophetically what will happen in that night. Let's look at this story. When you have returned to me, okay, let's continue. That, that, 32, just 32. 32, the Bible says, when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now, we are the brethren. So, this story is there for us. But I have prayed for you, okay, 33. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. <laughs> Let, let me tell you, it's easy to be radical before you face challenges. It's very easy to declare, by his stripes I'm healed. And then that day you discover, ah, I was told I have ulcers and it is incurable. Now that is where faith faileth. Hallelujah. So the man is promising Jesus and saying, uh, uh, just don't, don't, don't go very quickly. There's something here that we have to look at. 33, please, stay at 33. You know, this looks like, uh, you know, how you'll encourage a brother. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I am ready to die with you. I remember the sons of Zebedee, our, the mother came and negotiated and asked, who shall, we want one of my sons to sit at your right hand. And he said, the one who sits, I cannot decide, but they shall partake of my cup. So whatever Peter is saying, he does not have a reality of it. Okay, let's go to 34. Then I'll build up. I don't want to go ahead of me. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. 
And he said to them, when I sent you without money bags, knapsack and sandals, did you lack anything? So they said nothing. Then he said to them, but now he who has a money bag, let him take it. And likewise a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. <laughs> For I said to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with a transgressor. For the things concerning me have an end. 38. So they said, Lord, look here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. And his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. It's a long story. But let me just come to the place. The first interaction of Peter with Jesus was a miraculous interaction. Because Jesus sought for Peter's boat. And he asked him, can I use your vessel? That is in Luke chapter number 5. And Peter said, no problem. He was washing his nets. The whole night there was no catch. But the man was washing his nets. And Jesus preached with the vessel. And then he told Peter, now, let's launch into the deep. And at that time, it was the daytime. Fishermen don't fish during the day. The best time to catch fish is at night. Because all you need to do is place a lamp. And the fish will get attracted to the light. And as they come, they get to the net. So Peter was an experienced fisherman. And so when a teacher, because at that time he didn't know he was the Messiah. When a teacher tells him, let's go to the lake and carry your nets. Let's go. It didn't make sense, but he obeyed. And the Bible says, at that hour, after a great harvest, he was the first man who's, who accepted and made the sinner's prayer. He said, get away from me, Lord, because I'm a sinner. So the first interaction of Peter and Jesus was miraculous. So if there is a man who believed in Jesus, was Peter. Are you getting me? And, and he abandoned the nuts and followed him. And when we look at the miracles of Jesus... Peter was among the top three. So he not only knew him from a teacher dimension. He knew him from a power dimension. He could not doubt the possibilities and the realities of the Messiah. He is the one that carried the revelation of who Christ was. When men were asked, who do men say that I am? He said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood does not reveal this to you. And in the journeys, he also saw Jesus glow in the mountain of transfiguration. He had a voice say, this is my son. He had heaven, he saw Elijah, he saw Moses. So Peter is not Bartholomew. Or some of the disciples that did not have encounters with Jesus. This was the man in the inner circle. And this was the man that Jesus was about to hand over the New, the New Testament church, the Jewish church. And he's there, they are sitting on the table. Jesus knows he's going to die on the cross. It was not a prediction, it was a prophecy. So he knows his prophetic destination. He knows that Judas is among the twelve. And he's going to betray me. He knows the hour has come. And he knows everything that will happen from that time. Are we together? And when I was reading this story, I began to say, it is one thing to know. is another thing to enter where what you know is challenged. Working with theories is the easiest thing. Working with scriptures that we can utter is the easiest but Peter was there. He had gone through the theory. He was among the 12 who were sent to heal. He saw the power of God. He saw the realities of Zion. He walked with Christ. And the Bible says, now, at that time, as they were breaking bread in the last supper, Jesus prophesied to him and said, Peter, the devil has sought to sift you like wheat. 
I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. So I began to understand the reality of Jesus is that there is a place men can enter where their faith cannot keep them but the intercessions of Christ. Uh, let's look at a scripture. We'll come to this story. Let's look at a scripture. First Timothy 2.15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When faith faileth. You know we have taught faith, but I don't think we've ever seen this type, of, type dimension of faith. The Bible says, nevertheless, First Peter, sir. First Peter 2.15. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing. Ah. That is... Wait a minute. Is that first Timothy? Yes. No, that's not the scripture I'm looking for. I will check Second Timothy two fifteen. I don't know. Second Timothy two fifteen. If we don't get it, let us confirm. No, that's, that's not the one. But I'm looking for the scripture that says that Jesus, the man, there is no other mediator but the man, Jesus. Prof, look for that scripture. There, yes? Yes? 2.5. Yes. First Timothy 2.5. Sorry. 2.5. Okay. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ. I, I, I like the way Paul writes it because when he uses the name the man, it means this man knows our affliction. The Bible says, and the word became whatever the word became. It had a nature to understand the affliction of men. And so the one that intercedes for us, he does not sit in the level of God. He sits in the dimension of men so that he can identify with our affliction. These intercessions are not made in the... It is not Christ Jesus, the man. It is the man, Christ Jesus. Are we together? And I want this same man, Christ Jesus, is the one who said to Peter, I have prayed for you. I want to speak tonight and say, even when our prayers fail, there is intercession in heaven. There is a place where faith faileth. Hallelujah. When you read the story of Peter, when the man came, he was there with his sword. He thought this war, men fight like other wars. A part of him was prepared. There was a team among the Romans, among the, among the, the Jews, that was like the Mau Mau's of Kenya. They were believing for revolution. And they were very mad about the rulership of the Romans. And that team knew when the Messiah comes, our kingdom will be restored. So they were waiting for a political Messiah. And they knew we shall win by war. So they were just looking for a spiritual leader. Are we together? And so what was happening now? Peter maybe had the mentality that we are part of this team. It is time for the restoration of Israel. What they did not know is that the lamb came, the king came as a lamb, and then he will come the second time as a lion. So he had to die to deal with sin before he comes as a ruler to judge sin. So the first time he entered in the gates of Jerusalem through the ship gate as a lamb of God. That is exactly who John announced. He said, beyond the lamb of God. This team was called Zealot. It was a team, the Zealost. And there was one disciple among them who was a Zealost. They were zealous about 
the redemption of Israel, but they thought it shall be redeemed by a sword. So Peter was there. He knew it is war time. It is time for the kingdom to come. And guess what? He had a lot of faith. He knew the man they are coming for is a man. I have seen him raise the dead. I have seen him feed 5,000. I have seen him in secret places perform miracles. And so this time he took out his sword and he dealt with the ear of one of the Roman soldiers. And Jesus restored the ear, told him, take away your sword. And so Jesus was following Jesus. So the man stuck to his word, but he never stuck to it fully. <laughs> When I was in meditation, the Holy Ghost told me the first time Peter saw Jesus as a victim. Mm. Okay. All along, Peter knew him as a teacher and as the Messiah. Are you getting me? But at this hour, Jesus was bound. He was he was being slapped. They, they, they blindfolded him. And they were slapping him. Asking him who slapped you. And at this time. The man in Peter. Looked at Jesus. And he was doing nothing. He looked at him. With all the power that he had. His faith failed. I don't know if you are getting me. Because all along the dealings of. Of Peter. Were dealings of a man that could not be defeated. This man stopped the storms. I was in that boat. I know what I'm talking about. We were about to drown. He came and said, be still. The storm stopped. We tried on our method. Nothing happened. Not once, not twice. This man fed 5,000 people. He just lifted bread and said, he gives thanks. This man has healed leprosy. He has raised the dead. I was in the house of the young girl where he said, Talitha kum. I know who he is. But here the man Peter was following is seated, being mocked by the very system they thought they were to overthrow. At that level, his faith failed. And the Lord began to tell me, there are times I sit and the world looks like it is ruling. I am seated and the Roman kingdom was wicked. They were slapping him, scourging him and asking him if you are the Messiah then say who slapped you. You know that is the highest level of mockery. Imagine this is the man you've been following all your life <laughs> and you have put your trust. You just abandon your nets your career and your family to follow this man. And at this hour, he's now in the very system you thought he was coming to overthrow. Uh, at that level, his faith failed. He never saw him as Christ. And he was tested as it was prophesied. And I came to realize, when you enter a place of reality, where faith is tested, you forget even prophecy. He... At this hour, people are saying, oh, the world is dying. Oh, it is the end of the world. Oh, all things are being said. But can we console prophecy and ask ourselves, is it the end of the world? Has the revival that has been prophesied over Kenya, has it happened? No. So there are still things God has to do. <laughs> and you know, at that hour, the Bible says, it doesn't even say a young girl. It says, and a young damsel. I don't know if you've ever been called damsel. <laughs> That's a high, a high rank level of how young the girl was. When you have a young girl, that's a girl. But a damsel is a very young girl. <laughs> so a young damsel came and said, you look like one of the men that used to work with him. At that hour, Peter looked at the man he was following. And he looked at the damsel. Do, do you know what that represents? I, the first thing that came was a small challenge. The small challenge came. He looked at it. Looked at Jesus and said, mm -mm, I don't know. The next thing that came was not a young damsel. It was a big challenge. <laughs> Just to confirm. And Jesus said, before the cock rose. What was the cock? It was the symbol of time. So before this time shows up, 
You, Peter, you have denied me. Peter said, Jesus, you don't know me. We are, we are boys for life. Where you are buried, I'll be buried. Where you die, I'll die. He saw him from a glorious political dimension. He never saw him from a prophetic dimension. And until we see Jesus from the pages of prophecy, there are times he may look like he's seated and the systems of the world are ruling. I don't know if you've been in our time. Basically, I think we've been in that age. The age of reason where people have exhausted. Even right now, what are people waiting for? Vaccine. No one is waiting for a divine solution. It, even the faithful, we are all watching news. Has America discovered anything? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, they have not discovered. I, I heard there's another one in Russia. Have Russia discovered? Has China discovered? My friend, it may not come through the vaccine. My, my prayer is that may God anoint hands that can be laid on men. You see, when they give you the history of virus and vaccine, I can also give you the history of men that dealt with diseases. There's a man in God's general who went, there was a plague, and he went and said, put that plague on my hand. And what happened? The plague died. He was demonstrating the power of heaven with the current plague. And at that hour, oh my God, the church had a voice. So this is not the time to feel like Jesus has lost it. No. This is not the time to feel like the systems are the ones that are going to solve us out. He said, Peter, I have prayed for you. There is an intercession I have made. Because if I don't make this intercession, your faith will fail you. I know we have taught faith. Until I came through this scripture and I discovered there are things that can come in life and make you lose your faith. And it is there in the Bible. Did Abraham lose his faith? Yes. When he slept with Haggai, was that an action of faith? No, that was, a, that was a kitchen cabinet meeting. They just sat with the wife and said, you know what? There's a prophecy, it has delayed. So what do we do in this matter? Let's begin to accelerate the, the prophecy. Did they get a daughter? No, they got a son. Was everything prophesied over him, was it transferred to the son? Yes, it happened. Whatever the Lord has said to him happened to the son. There are many people in scripture who reached a place where they failed in faith. But I bless the Lord because those men did not have what we have today. The great intercessor, the man Jesus, had not ascended to his throne. We live in a time, even when our faith fails, there is one interceding for us. He knows the end from the beginning. He knew this man will betray me, but I'll not be offended. I will pray for him. Because if I deal with him in his level, he will not survive. He said, oh, Peter, the devil purposes to swift you like wheat. Now, and I began to meditate on that word. And I discovered when my faith fails, what shows up? Logic, reality, fear. What am I when I have those things? I'm in the hand of the devil, ready to be swift like wheat. <laughs> ah. Hello. So he said, I have prayed for you. I came to remind the church, whatever is happening globally, it's not news to heaven. Don't think God is watching CNN. Receiving updates. And saying, mm -mm, it has reached 200,000. Mm. Trinity, there's a Trinity conference. Agent. <laughs> Those meetings are here. According to heaven, if you've researched well, this disease was not even seen in 2015. A prophet saw it in 1970, revival. <laughs> hey, hey, okay. Not, I, I just came across that one min, minute clip. There is a prophet of God who used to be called William Marion Branham. He saw it in 70s. And he said, he, he prophesied so much about China. He said he's seeing cars coming from China which look like eggs. They're happening. The shapes of cars are changing. He prophesied many things in the 70s when cars were like bread. 
they were all square. He said, I see cars like eggs. And he, he prophesied about very strange viruses, not virus, viruses that are going to hit the world. So this thing was seen. Now the problem is, it has happened in a time of men who all they hear is motivational preaching. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Ah, it shall come to pass. Nah, nah. And now, right now, people are looking at reality versus motivation. And they're saying, boss, you're telling us it doesn't matter. But here, reality is different. And because we never train the church for such moments, it is very easy for men to give up on faith. They have never seen a dimension of God, quote and unquote, that looks defeated. They are used to, when, when something happens, they gather, they pray, the power comes down and things are settled. Now they have prayed for two months. It looks like, Jesus, are you still there? And they are still continuing in prayer and will not stop to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there is a place where faith can, can fail. I don't know if you've ever reached there. I've ever reached there. And I can't tell you why I'm still saved, but now I know. It's because there was a man who never gave up to intercede for me. Enough times we have given up. Challenges have come our way. But I discovered, I don't know why. Enough times I gave up with the ministry. And I came to understand there is a man, his intercessions are the ones that keep me. It is not my labor and things I do. There is another intercessor who knows the future. And not only does he pray for me now, he has prayed for me. And do you know what he told Peter? When you return, because when you fail in faith, you backslide. So he told him, when after backsliding, <laughs> now strengthen your brothers because you know men can fail in faith. <laughs> so I'm doing what Peter ought to have done. Strengthening the brothers to tell them men can fail in faith. But there is an intercessor who prays for us. So the man was there. A damsel came and said, are you, are you, are you, are you, you, you look like one of them. In fact, the second guy said, you even speak like one of those people. And I want to believe if he was living in our current status, he would have made a joke like, Change your supplier. Change your supplier. <laughs> Wherever you're getting that information, change your supplier. This guy, I have never seen him. And he'll even draw a cross. <laughs> Say, never, I don't know him. <laughs> because when he was declaring that he's ready to die with Jesus, he did not know the kind of death Jesus was to die. He didn't have any reality of what he was going to go through. And the third time, he denied him. So that tells me, when I deny Jesus in the circumstance and crisis, <laughs> my faith has failed. And after that, the cock road. And I love the movie of Jesus. Do you know what happens? In that movie, you'll always, you see the cock. I don't know where they got that cock from. You see the cock crowing. Then you see Jesus lifting his head. And then looking at Peter. And then Peter looks at Jesus. As if to remind him, remember what I told him. I told you before the cock crows, you will deny me. But I'm happy because not only did I tell you, but I prayed for you. The fact that your faith has failed you, you have an opportunity to repent and come back to faith and still continue with the fellowship. Are we together? And there's a place where faith can fail. But I know there is one who intercedes for me. There's a place you reach and you come and say, it is not by might, nor by my power. Here, another power must show up. And I want to believe where we are heading as a nation. Our faith may not be strong enough to hold all of us. Some of you, it is the intercessions of Christ that will keep you. Statistics will rise. Things might get worse. But we remember there is another intercessor. Who prays for us. And because of his prayers, things will work for my good. Hallelujah. 
when faith faileth. <laughs> the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crowed today, you will disown me three times. 62. And he went outside and wept. That was his moment of restoration. A broken heart and a contrite spirit. The Lord can never reject. Guess what? The Lord knew he would repent. Because he told him, when you get restored, strengthen. So all these things were in the future. He knew this man, when this issue comes, he will not stand it. So what I need to do is to pray for him. Because this issue, he does not have spiritual stamina to stand it. I want to believe God knows us as individuals. He knows what you can handle and what you cannot handle. But there are things he will not avert. He will pray for you so that you can walk through them. Even when I sit as a pastor, I've tried to saw the Lord on this matter. But I just kept on hearing one word, one word. I'm challenging the civilizations of men. <laughs> the next word I heard is that as they get closer to the vaccine, there will be a challenge. Because the hopes of men is not in Christ. It's in a vaccine. So there will be a challenge and they will go. And at that time, the faith of many will be shaken. Because right now there is hope. But at that time, the faith of many will be shaken. But I also heard, and I was just looking at some of the global prophets, and I heard after this outbreak, there will be an outpour. There will be such a genuine hunger for God. Because people will begin to discover that all these systems can fail. <laughs> In a week, business has stopped in Kenya. Because of something we cannot see. In a week. One, one week. One week. <laughs> so what about if we go for a month? Which we are not sure. Because they say a vaccine needs around three years. If you accelerate it, it needs one year. And it needs around 18 months. If it's so much accelerated. So it begins now to tell you. If my faith faileth. That's why I came to tell you. If your faith faileth. There is an intercessor. You just fix your eyes. Leave CNN and Citizen and NTV and KBC and all those media houses. Leave them alone. I tell you, you might die of depression and you're not even sick. <laughs> Someone told me, even me by the way, when I heard these are the symptoms of Corona, I began to feel like I have them. I don't know about you. I, I don't know about you. In fact, the first thing that happened, I sneezed. And it was a heavy one. Then I looked, I, I looked and I said... So, so, when I was traveling, when I was traveling, the, when we arrived in Ethiopia, we, we, we arrived at around 2 at night, and we had to go through screening. And so, now, now you're in a foreign land, and they have just announced in your land, there is corona. The first time I experienced discrimination. I tell you, we are separated. Kenyans decide. <laughs> and then now, when the gun came, I touched my head and I felt a head fever. <laughs> then I passed through the gun. I, I even asked the guy, well, what's my temperature? He said, no more, sir. I said, are you sure? Because it's hot here. It didn't affect. So I discovered that the, you can hear something until it becomes your reality. So we need to be sensitive of what we are hearing, even at this hour. Some of us, by the grace of God, we are permitted to hear some things. Because of the office we hold. Are we together? Some of you, even the Holy Ghost cannot tell you some things. Because when you hear them, you might commit suicide. And give up. So there are men who God allows them to hear some things. So that they can get the direction of prayer. And know the strategy to be applied. And, and when I was praying yesterday, I just felt that word. Heaven in my spirit that when faith faileth. And he told me, son... Go and tell my sons and my daughters that there is another intercessor whose faith can never fail. There is another intercessor who was there before you showed up. He was praying for you before you came. He's praying for you even right now. The news that are on earth, they are not news to him. And he knows that some of us at this walk, we might enter a place and feel like faith has failed. 
At this hour, many people will say many things. Uh, people have become prophets. I don't know if you've discovered. Everyone is prophesying online. But my prayer is that may your ears be sensitive to hear the voice of God. May your ears be sensitive to hear the voice of God. And I also come from the school of thought. In fact, I was just saying there and saying, man, the government has encouraged us to quarantine and stay at home. Can we encourage the church to quarantine and stay possibly in a place fasting and praying as they begin to avert this thing? Because some of these things don't go because of 10 minutes prayer. The same way we are staying at home, can men lock up themselves in agreement and begin to cry and pray until there is news? It may not be global, but God can heal a nation. It's not impossible. Isn't it not amazing that Uganda does not have any case? And do you know some of the fathers who are there? There was a revival in Uganda that began. The man of God, Kayanja, began 77 days of glory. Right now he's in his fourth year. So could God be speaking something? Those men were in prayer. 77 days of glory. What were they doing? They were meeting daily in the CBD. Daily for 77 days. Now it, it's still on the third year. Daily. Daily. So could it be that they had intensified the atmosphere with power? <laughs> okay. Now this looks like languages that are not very familiar. Until there is preservation of a nation. I want to believe after 21st when we have the national day of prayer, if men become serious, we can see an aversion. Have you discovered today there was no news for any infection? Yes? And do you know what that tells you? Men can continue releasing spiritual energy. And say, we, the soldiers cannot secure corona. It takes spiritual intelligence even to interfere with the levels of governance and how decisions are made and we can secure the corridors of this nation. Is someone hearing me? So for me, I believe it's time for intensive prayer. This nation we prayed and we saw the handshake which is now collapsing because after praying, we never prayed again. That thing that happened outside the Rambe house, it was a product of prayer. We never waited on the judiciary to make a ruling again. We said, now Kenyans, let's gather, let's pray. But right now, because of global statistics, men don't even know what they are praying. They know one scripture, Psalms 91. And these are very personal scriptures. No plague shall come near me. So we have entered a place where it is about me. You, if you die, die. Me, I know. Me, me. I tell you that's not the attitude. As the church, we need to pray for the preservation of the nation, not me. It, it has to be a global sound. And that's when you begin to know faith is failing. Eh, the kind of lectures that are on Facebook. He, hey. and, and I like what McDowell wrote. He said, this is a very challenging time for pastors. If you close the church, they say you have no faith. If you open the church... They say you don't care about the people. If you sanitize your hands, they say you have no faith. If you don't sanitize, they say you are ignorant and you are religious. No, no, okay, we are, we, are <laughs> we are in two extremes. But I believe God is going to come through. When faith fails, when faith fails, when faith fails. The same Peter, as I conclude, today we'll finish a little bit early. The same Peter after this repentant prayer, this was the very man who broke the doors of the upper room. The Bible says, when the power came, there was a barrier. This time not a temptation. A barrier not to deny Jesus, but to announce him. He looked at the 120, looked at the barrier, he moved with the barrier, and this time, he faced 3,000. He was afraid of three for his life. But after the power of the Holy Ghost came, hmm, the man lost his life. This time he was willing to announce the same Jesus he had denied to the masses. May the power of the Holy Ghost be renewed upon our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my prayer that we will, we will just generate a hashtag. And, and begin to sell hope. And begin to disseminate this fear. It's my prayer that we'll go on Facebook live. 
and just read the scripture and tell men, prayers have never failed. Many things have failed, but prayer have never failed. We can begin to change the energies in the atmosphere by men using the available gadgets. Just get to, five minutes is enough. Get online. Make some rulings over this nation. Say, Kenya, we shall not die. We are not a corona nation. We are a Jesus nation. Revival is coming. Let us pray. I tell you, that's how we are going to change the narration. And one song, not of hope, this is not just hope. One song that speaks the reality of heaven will begin to pass like bushfire. And that song will be repeated. That song will be repeated. The government has spoken and they have to speak as the government because they owe us some information. But the church also must speak. And not carelessly. I saw another preacher saying, Apeleko China, Patane na yo Corona. That's a careless speech. And I felt like sharing that video on social media and say, this preacher, we don't know him. Because we have allowed some funny preachers to speak and that is the video spreading and people are thinking the church has spoken. That one is not the church. That one is a joker somewhere in Meru who does not even know what this thing is. Making funny statements. Okay. Did I say that on... But anyway, I'm tired of being misrepresented. That's what will be played maybe today on NTV. Pastor speak. And then it looks like a joke and people are dying. This is the time to tell guys... Solemn assembly, let's gather and pray. Let's meet online. Let's all go live and begin to release ruling at this hour. Let the midnight intercessors go public. Let the four o'clock intercessors, let them go public. Let us now not just hide in a prayer closet. Let us come out publicly and begin to release another sound in the realms of the city. And I tell you by that, something will shift. Because when all this negativity flows, we, our lives will not stop. We will see God in the land of the living. We have no other place to go. This is where God has ordained us. This is where God has planted us. This is where God has kept us. If we are the church, let's take time to repent. Let's take time to call upon the heavens. Let's release a word. Hallelujah. There's a scripture in the book of Timothy again. I tell you the writings of Paul. And again, the writings of Paul were the writings of a dead man. Timothy was written by Paul while he was in jail ready to be executed. And he writes and tells Timothy that I know whom I have believed. Not what I have believed. There is what and whom. What is the news? But there is the whom. That is the person. Who is that person? Is my intercessor. Who is that person? The creator of the heavens and the earth. Who is that person? I lift my eyes unto Jesus. Who is Jesus? The author and the finisher of my faith. So that person is the entity of my faith. I rather lift my eyes to him because that one has never failed. That one, while there were storms in a boat, he was asleep. And when they called upon him, he showed up and rebuked the storms. May we call the heavens and may we not pray out of fear. May we pray knowing whom we have believed. Not calling him because of what is happening. Those are religious prayers. We must call him because we know whom we have believed. Are we together? I, I, I will not tell you this is a demonic attack. Me, I, I don't have that intelligence. Uh, and I cannot stand and take the office of a prophet where I'm not. One thing I know is that I operate in apostolic grace and one of the graces is to avert calamities. It's a ruling anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we take time and just pray a few prayers then we go home? Is that okay? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, your faith is intact because of the person praying for you. I want to tell you, if it was you, possibly let me have somebody on the quiz. If it was you on that day where Peter was, even you possibly you, you would have denied him on the small challenge called the damsel. <laughs> the, the, the battalion of the Romans was there. It was not a laughing matter. The whole government of Rome had been released. The soldiers of Herod had been released. Uh, okay, let me give you an example. I, I saw, you know, in this craze of people being arrested by DCI. I, I, did you see how the government used to go for guys? Yes? I, I saw when they were going for this guy who was associated with um, fake military, the pilot. There were military cars. 
the way they went for that guy, if I was his neighbor, and possibly they asked him, me, do you know anyone by this name? I would have told them, I'm new here. I'm, sir, I'm new here. I came yesterday. Because the whole government was there. <laughs> Sometimes we read the story of Peter and we think the guy was a coward. But there are situations whereby denying Jesus looks like the way of survival. And it is in those situations where he prays for you so that your faith can be intact. Let's just stand on our feet and make a ruling over this nation. Hallelujah.